Weekly Heartbeat. Today, I wanna to look at the example of Jesus and how he showed kindness to those around him. And in looking at that, then we can see how we're meant to be kind in our lives. Jesus practiced kindness that was very radical for his time and culture. Jesus treated women as well as men. He spoke to both. He looked after children as well as adults. He looked after other races as well as the Jewish race. He also looked at the sick and the weak as well as the strong. And often Jesus wore himself out by praying for others, by feeding them, by doing miracles and helping them in lots of different ways. On multiple occasions, kindness stopped Jesus in what he was doing. He changed direction to help those in need. Now, one of the miracle stories in the Bible is the feeding of the 5,000. And Jesus actually, if you go back to before that story in the book of Mark, Jesus was actually grieving the death of John the Baptist. He'd just heard that John the Baptist had been killed and Jesus went off by himself to grieve. But a group of people followed him and in his love and kindness towards them, he put aside his grief, spoke to them and then did the miracle of the 5,000, giving them something to eat. And there are many other occasions where someone who might be blind called out to Jesus and Jesus stopped what he was doing. He went to the person and he healed them. Often it says in the Bible that Jesus was moved with compassion. Now, as we look at people around us, are we moved with compassion? We too should be moved with compassion to help people, to give to people, to share, to care for them, to encourage them, to extend mercy. God wants us to be kind. You know, when Jesus showed kindness to others, he was showing them respect. He was restoring their dignity. And he was saying that you're valued. Do we do the same when we're kind to people? I want to look at a story in the Bible. It's in Luke chapter 8. It goes from verse 40 to 56. So there is a few verses to read. We're going to read this story about a girl who is raised to life and a woman who is healed. And we're going to read the story and then I'm going to pull it apart. We're going to see how Jesus is kind in this story. Now, when Jesus returned, the crowd welcomed him, for they were all waiting for him. Just then there came a man named Jairus, a leader of the synagogue. He fell at Jesus' feet and begged him to come to his house, for he had an only daughter, about 12 years old, who was dying. As he went, the crowds pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years, and though she had spent all she had on physicians, no one could cure her. She came up behind him and touched the fringe of his clothes, and immediately her hemorrhage stopped. Then Jesus asked, Who touched me? When all denied it, Peter said, Master, the crowds surround you and press in on you. But Jesus said, Someone touched me, for I noticed that power had gone out from me. When the woman saw that she could not remain hidden, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared in the presence of all the people why she had touched him and how she had been immediately healed. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. While he was speaking, someone came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Do not trouble the teacher any longer. When Jesus heard this, he replied, Do not fear, only believe, and she will be saved. When he came to the house, he did not allow anyone to enter with him except Peter, John and James and the child's father and mother. They were all weeping and wailing for her, but he said, Do not weep for she is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him, knowing that she was dead. But he took her by the hand and called out, Child, get up. Her spirit returned and she got up at once. Then he directed them to give her something to eat. Her parents were astounded, but he ordered them to tell no one what had happened. So there's a bit going on in this story. There's a few different parts. What can we learn about how Jesus was kind to people. The first thing I wanna show you at the beginning of the story is that Jesus showed kindness by changing direction. The leader of the synagogue, Jairus, came to Jesus because his daughter's dying and he knows that Jesus could heal her. 
And so he comes running to Jesus. And as soon as Jesus hears, says that Jesus, he went. He changed direction and he went. This little girl's situation was much more pressing than what Jesus had. He saw a need and so he changed his direction. Jesus was flexible and he was also at the same time able to accommodate another interruption because once he changes direction to go towards Jairus's house, this woman who has been hemorrhaging for 12 years pushes through the crowd, reaches forward, grabs Jesus' cloak and she's healed. She's immediately healed. And the next way that we can learn from Jesus about how we can express kindness is by listening to others. You know, Jesus knew straight away that someone who touched him, some power had gone from him. And his disciple Peter said, Master, the, the crowd's pressing in on you. I don't know about you, but when I've been in crowds, you can be pushed and shoved all the way around so you don't know who's been around you. And that's what Peter's saying to Jesus. Come on, Jesus, like there's a crowd here. Of course you're getting touched. But Jesus goes, no, no, this was different. And so this woman comes trembling to Jesus. She's in fear. And the reason she's in fear is because of her sickness. She would have been ostracized. She was considered unclean. She had to live on the outskirts of the city. She would have been away from her family for 12 years. She wouldn't have been able to talk to anyone to share her story. And Jesus calls her out. He surprises everyone by talking to her, listening to her story and healing her. Jesus showed kindness to this woman when everyone rejected her. Jesus showed kindness in speaking to her and acknowledging her. He listened to her. And while this is happening, then we know that someone from Jairus' house comes and says, don't worry Jesus anymore because your daughter is dead. And Jesus goes, no, 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 she's just sleeping. And he goes with Jairus to the house. And when he gets there, he says, she's not dead, but she's asleep. And everyone who's there, they laugh at Jesus and go, no, she's not, she's dead. But Jesus goes in and his kindness through his love and compassion, he raises, raises this girl back to life. And then what he does is amazing because he doesn't take her out and show everyone, look, she's back. I told you she wasn't dead, which to be honest, if I raised someone from the dead, that's probably what I would have done, would have paraded her out in front of everyone. But Jesus speaks volumes because he doesn't do that. He says to her parents, don't tell anyone. He doesn't go out and make fun of the people who mocked him. He's kind to them. So this week, I want us to think about these few questions about how are we kind in our lives? So the first question is, how often do we change direction for others? How often do we become annoyed by interruptions when we have things to do? How often do we ignore people? Do we take the time to listen to someone's story? Because although at times listening can seem simple, changing direction can seem simple, how often do we do them? I don't do them all the time, I certainly don't. But we have an example here of Jesus. Who every time someone was in need, he listened, he changed direction. So let's pray. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, I ask you that you would come and you would help me in my life to be kind. Lord, help me to change direction. Help me to listen to others. Help me be Help me to be kind to those in need. Help me to be flexible, Lord Jesus, and help me to follow the example that you've shown me. I pray, Lord, that you would bless our weeks and that you would speak to us every day. And I ask this in your name. Amen. In the name of Father, Son, Holy Spirit.